Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and we're going to be doing a video covering this Chaos Warriors pack. Um, specifically, this video is just going to be looking at the three new legendary lords that have been announced. Uh, Sigvald, the Magnificent, Colex Sun Eater, and Archon, the Ever Chosen. I'm joined by Arch Warhammer, who has his own channel. I'll let him introduce himself right now. Greetings, I'm Arch. I do lore videos based on Warhammer 40k, some various Let's Play and some historical stuff, mostly just long, long videos. Yeah, cool. And we're usually joined by uh, Grey Hunter, who has his own channel. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us uh, for this recording. Um, but yeah, we're just going to dive into it. I think this is going to be relatively, relatively <laughs> short. Um, first, I want to point off that they have announced three new legendary lords. That's uh, relatively interesting because most of the other announced factions have been limited to two. They did say there will be additional ones that are going to be made available through DLC, but it's interesting that this pack comes with three at its core. Um, I'm not necessarily familiar with these, but do the three here represent different arms of the Chaos um, faction, different elements, or are they just kind of the top three iconic ones? Sadly, they are not uh, representative of different factions. Well, one of them are, but I would have much preferred to see one champion for each god rather than this, because we have uh, Ashon the Everchosen, who is the champion of chaos uh, in its entirety, so chaos undivided, and the Sigvald, which is the champion of Slanesh, and Kolak Sonita, well, he's pretty much just in it for himself, wanting to devour the sun and stuff. Yeah, so that's uh, that's unfortunate that they it, it doesn't seem to be in this case um, that they're going to be separating chaos based off the different chaos gods. Um, perhaps in the future they will with DLC, but it seems like in this case they're trying to make it one undivided element, which was one of the things Arch had mentioned before is a problem when they try and make chaos a playable faction because you're forced to cut corners, you're forced to do consolidation and simplification as opposed to if this had been an unplayable faction, they could have very easily done, you know, four different distinct races with crazy units that weren't necessarily balanced. Um, so that's the downside of having chaos be playable. On the upside, it seems pretty cool. So let's go back into the lords. Let's go through these kind of uh, step by step. So the first one is Sigvald the Magnificent. It says um, that beautiful from birth, Sigvald's fondness for hedonistic excess saw him exiled from his tribe, but also gained him a powerful patron, Slanesh. Now he heads an army devoted to himself. Slaying anything he deems ugly or unsavory, he fights as much for his own perverse ego as he does for Slanesh. So uh, Arch, what can you tell us about Sigvald? Ah, uh, very little, but that goes under the PG-18 rating, but I'll try. Sigvald the Magnificent, the champion of, of uh, Slanesh. I was about to say Zinch there for a moment, considering Hermaphrodite and all of that nonsense, but no, it's Slanesh. Don't worry. Sigvald is an interesting little character on the tabletop because he has some fascinating special rules, which I'm really wondering if they're going to be implementing in Total War Warhammer. For example, the guy is so vain that he surrounds himself by a small army of bodyguards who are so enthralled by his magnificent visage that their only task in life is to hold up shields polished to a mirror sheen so that Sigwald can enjoy the view while fighting occasionally. How the hell they do this in a Total War game is uh, would be interesting. If they don't get do that, I will be sad because that's... Sigwald without his mirror sheen guard is... Yeah, Kind of defeats the point, and one of the reasons why I'm surprised they picked him, because well, Sigvald's an interesting choice if you want to go the whole way, so let's assume they do. Let's assume they give him the mirror guards, let's assume they give him his magical armor, because Sigvald is essentially, or virtually, impossible to wound. Any His magical armor is such that it can't even get dirt. The Slanesh has blessed him to the point where any cut struck against him is going to instantaneously disappear, if it even hits him. Any speck of dirt thrown up during the fighting that hits his magnificent plate will just vanish instantly. And his sword, of course, is capable of parting steel like it was butter, so he's going to be an interesting little character. Okay, so he's going to be a footman, uh, mostly sort of melee type unit. Does he have any magic abilities? Ah, uh, yes. In a way, he has the same magic that all champions of Slanesh have. They are so goddamn handsome that people will 
people just fall in love with them instantaneously upon view, which is not entirely natural, to say the least, but he's not a battle mage. He doesn't like that stuff because it tends to get him dirty again, which is not a thing he enjoys. Okay, well let's move on to Colex Sun Eater. I'll read the description and then you'll follow up with more. So Colex Sun Eater is a formidable figure to behold, a gigantic dragon ogre believed by many to be the second eldest of all dragon ogres. He towers over the battlefield, swinging his gigantic hammer with ease. He is considered by some to be a god. Uh, yes, Colic. Now, this is going to be a really interesting one, because if you thought Sigwald was bloody overpowered, <laughs> this guy's hilarious. Uh, essentially, he's invulnerable uh, to everything, essentially, and his hammer is so powerful that it brings a constant thunderstorm, which empowers him even further. Uh, essentially, he doesn't even have to hit you. If he hits anywhere in the same postcode as you are, you are going to be dead. So how the hell are you going to do him, I'm wondering. This is one of the problems with adding in these massive chaos stars, because I'm like, if these are even going to be mildly balanced, it's going to destroy a lot of the fantasticness of them. Like, Colic Sun Eater would be a fantastic boss-level battle when a massive horde comes up, uh, spawns on your borders, and invades. And he would literally take the attention of several cannon batteries to bring down a super unit... But since they're playable, I have to assume that they're going to try and balance him. And seeing Colic Sun Eater get his ass handed to him by a unit of 80 dwarf slayers will make me punch my computer. But sadly, not too much lore about him, sadly, because he is one of the old characters that gave him Sword Shop. He meant back in the old, good old days when they didn't have to take everything so seriously, and of course before they killed the universe. So pretty much all that we know is what Oakley stated. He is probably the second oldest, and we don't even know that. And he is absolutely goddamn massive. That is about it. And they did say somewhere else in this post that uh, some of your campaign missions as these legendary lords is going to be to go collect chaos artifacts, perhaps get weapons, perhaps seek the favor of the gods to get power-ups and skills. Uh, so it'd be interested to see how they make these characters at the beginning be very tame and then see how you can grow them into the, the lords and champions that they're supposed to be in the lore uh, itself. Um, so we'll see. But let's move on to the last guy. So this is, uh, I saw you pronounce it as Archon. I'll don't know what pronunciation is right. Archon, Archon. He's the ever chosen, either way. So a former Sigmarite Templar, Archon stumbled upon an ancient doctrine that contained within the secrets of his face. Renouncing his allegiance to Sigmar, he journeyed north to the dreaded Chaos Waste to offer his service to the Chaos Gods. Here, the ruinous powers gave him uh, their blessing to set out on his quest to become the ever chosen, the Lord of the End Times. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't the thing to say pronounce his name either neither do the games workshop staff i've heard at least three different pronunciations of that name and i think that's the point it's he's supposed to be such a magical chaotic creature that you shouldn't you should know how to speak about it much like the whole uh, uh, cthulhu lore etc which is actually something i like about him but yes the zealous temple of Se templar of sigma that's one version another version is that he was spit spat directly out of the uh, warp gates in the north another version again is that he came to Earth in a thunderbolt and all manners of stuff. He, he is chaos uh, personified, and he is the mightiest chaos champion to have ever walked the Earth. And this is one of those interesting things, because he did the whole quest of gathering up the chaos artifacts. That, how, that is how he became the Ever Chosen. So it would be really interesting to see him in, in his early times. And he probably makes the most sense, because you could actually have him start out in the north as a relatively weak Chaos Lord that gains prominence by gathering all of these Chaos artifacts. Something you couldn't really do with Sigvald or Kolek, because they already have entire legends built around them. I mean, I imagine we're not going to be seeing Kolek as a bright-faced 12-year-old bright -faced pup wandering around, as he would have to grow big, big pretty goddamn quickly, but... Arshon, on the other hand, makes a lot more sense, as he can, he has a proper motivation to gather it. He wants to unify Chaos and finally put an end to the upstart humans taking over the world for Chaos. So, in my opinion, he's the only one that really goddamn makes sense, and he's also by far the most badass one of them. I mentioned how overpowered Kolek and Sigvald are, well... 
Arshon has beaten all of them in single duels. That is how ridiculous he is. On tabletop, there was a game mode where Arshon alone was essentially worth half the point cost of an entire enemy army. To the point where he is essentially banned from normal games. So I look forward to him. He's going to be cool. And he's honestly the only one I'm really optimistic for because he's... Like I've mentioned already, he feels a lot more dynamic. You could take him in a lot more interesting ways than you could Sigvald or uh, Hollek. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, so I'd be interested to see how they, they do the other ones in terms of progression. Um, I do wonder, what is the role of the Everchosen? The Everchosen is the prophesized leader of chaos the one that will unify all the forces of chaos, because normally they are split into the powers worshipping the different gods, uh, gods Korn, Nurgle, slash Zinch. And these forces are virtually never on friendly footing. The only one who can unify them into one single faction, that being Chaos Undivided, is the Everchosen. There has been other Everchosens that have, haven't actually met up to the mark, but Arshon is the only one so far to have gathered all the artifacts, and additionally, he simply kicked the shit out of anyone that dared argue. Uh, when he wandered up to Sigvald, Sigvald essentially put one you know, look at him and went, well, I'm not fighting that, so let's just follow orders. Cool. All right, well, I think that does it for the coverage of the Legendary Lords. A lot to them. The character models so far seem pretty cool, um, but we have to wait and see how they're going to handle these guys, see if they're quite as dynamic as the other characters that we've seen from the, the other factions and see what narratives they put behind these guys. Anyways, that's going to be it. Make sure to check the link below for uh, Arch's channel where you can see all kinds of lore that he does. He not only does fantasy lore, but also he started 40K lore as well, and he does a, a whole bunch of other games, so be sure to check him out. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.